Welcome again, folks, to Wellversed. Lovely to be together on this sunny day, and I pray that the time we spend will be a blessing. I want to move on from where I left off last week. I'm in Philippians, of course, from verse 5 uh, through to verse 18. Philippians 2. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky, as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. That's such a great little passage that I enjoy reading it. And I hope that it sort of resonated with you a little. So last week we spoke about humility as opposed to selfish ambition and vain conceit. And I just want to just backtrack a moment. How does humility, using your strength for the good of others, differ from being a doormat? And I left that question with you last week, and I wonder whether you've had a chance to actually reflect on that a little. Because in a sense, it's about being passive and being active. Humility sometimes can just be a very passive thing. But in Christ's terms, Humility is an active word. It's not just something that we talk about. It's something we do. So verse 5 picks up on Christ-like living in your relationships with one another. Have the same mindset as Christ who lowered himself and made himself a servant for our sakes. How can we be servants? Have you ever thought about that? How can we be servants? In our culture, and especially in Africa, the word servant conjures up servitude, conjures up master and servant, conjures up being lesser than someone else as a servant. But Jesus wasn't talking about that kind of servant. He was talking about servanthood, if you like, in godly terms. Because he says it in 6 and 7, you know, who being in the very nature of God, didn't consider equality something to be used to his own advantage. But made himself nothing, taking on the nature of his servant. But it was a very active kind of word that he's using there. It speaks about reaching out. In Mark chapter 10 and verse 43, Jesus says, Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. The Jesus picture of servanthood was a very different picture. Jesus didn't have to grasp his equality with God. It was his to begin with. He is God. You know, verses 6 and 7 just talk about Jesus didn't consider equality with God something to be used as an advantage, but to his own disadvantage, he made himself nothing. And I think that servanthood, when we serve one another with a view to blessing someone else, not necessarily reducing our own status, but blessing someone else, then servanthood becomes something different. Servanthood in godly terms is not lowering ourselves, but just simply recognizing that we can reach out to one another in love and make a difference. And verses 8, 9, 10, and 11 speak about that. You know, that verse 10 is just such a lovely verse that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Servanthood in Christian terms glorifies God. God 
glorifies Jesus, not me. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm lowering myself. I'm just pointing away from myself to someone greater than myself. This speaks about the highest place in heaven and on earth. Really, that highest place is actually at the right hand of God. And one day, one day, every one of us will need to bow the knee. Not because it's demanded of us, but because we love God and we do our best to serve Him. Paul is calling the Philippians to be obedient. Paul is calling us to follow Christ's example, to be more like Christ, more perfect like Christ. Yes, I know we will never attain the perfection, but the call that Jesus makes on our lives is to project his image to the world around us, drawing attention not to ourselves, but to God himself. In spiritual terms, this is the nature of the servant. When I serve you, I'm not asking you to recognize me for who I am. I'm asking you to see who I am pointing you to. And if your service of one another is such that you point other people to be Christ-like, to see the example that he is setting for us, then I think this letter that Paul is writing to the Philippians is what it's about. God wants to use you and me as an example to project who he is in our lives. But we can't, verse 13, we can't do this by our own strength. We only do what we do by God working in us. It is Jesus Christ in us who gives us the strength to serve one another. We're not serving because we want the glory. We're serving because we want to point others to Jesus. My servanthood allows me to take a step back. And in a sense, if you can picture it, taking my left hand and saying, my friend, here's Jesus. Jesus, with my right hand, here is my friend. In other words, I'm in the middle here, pointing you to Jesus, pointing Jesus to you. For me, that's my picture of Christian servanthood, is to point away from myself and point other people to Jesus and what he can do in their lives. Now, we can't do this by our own strength. We can only do this by God's working his power in us and through us. It is Jesus Christ who gives us the strength. It is Jesus Christ who gives us the desire and the servant heart to reach outside of ourselves to make a difference to other people's lives. Of course we are free to accept and reject the offer that he makes to us. Of course we can refuse. But the call that God is making on my life and making on your life is that he has no hands but your hands, no hands but my hands to make a difference in our world. When we interact with people, maybe our prayer, and I say this with the utmost humility, maybe when we interact with other people, I pray that other people we will see something of Jesus in me in you as we reach out in his strength. I think that this is what Paul is trying to say to the Philippians. Can we project something of, of the grace and the glory and the majesty and the power and the love and the gentleness and the compassion that is Jesus? Because in a sense, this is what he's calling the Philippians to do. He's calling the Philippians to serve him, to go out into their world and tell the world about who he is. But we can only do that when we have brought ourselves to accept his love for us. I can't tell people about Jesus' love for me unless I've experienced it. You can't tell other people about Jesus' love for you unless you've experienced it. And in a sense, this is what I'm doing. I'm calling all of us to just make a recommitment and allow Jesus back into our lives or into our lives. 
such that our lives will tell his story and ask the question, is there any area in my life, any area in our lives that we are refusing to hand over to God first so that he then is free to use us to his glory? Because in essence, that verse 5 that I read you, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And verse 7 actually says it. He made himself nothing by taking on the nature of a servant. That doesn't mean downtrodden and overwhelmed and banished, as it were, but just allowed himself to project an image that calls people to the love and the grace and the forgiveness and the beauty of who Jesus is in our lives. Verses 14 through 18. Can I read them again? Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you, so that you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Are we living joyous lives for Christ? Are we living infectious lives for Christ that point people to the beauty and the wonder and the glory of a relationship that is beyond description? I, I've gone on a bit, but I'm passionate about this, my friends. I hope, I hope that it's been helpful for you just to understand that Paul is calling the Philippians and calling us just to serve him, to reach out in his name and bless people around us and make a difference in their lives, to shine like stars, as he puts it in verse 15. And so God bless you as we go our separate ways now, and I ask for God to just go with you every step of the way. Let's just pray a moment. So, Father, this is your day. This is the day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And we pray for your power and your peace and your blessing and your joy and your laughter and your excitement uh, to go with us as we go into our day such that we may shine like stars and point your world to you in everything that we do. And so bless us as we go our separate ways now, our God, and we thank you for the time we've shared with you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have a lovely day, folks, and God bless you. <laughs>